Good afternoon. I'd like to share a story with you, a journey. It's actually a very personal journey, one that involves my core, my passion, in offering patients the highest level of care possible. Those patients seeking to have a family, a child, those patients going through the exceptionally difficult process of in vitro fertilization. The journey begins with this passion and continues with a sudden and abrupt loss of the ability to follow this passion, to pursue this passion. Continued by devastation and utter pain. And then Determination. Determination to solve a problem. The problem involves air and the impact of air on the chances that a single embryo will successfully become a new life, a child. The determination to solve this problem led to the healing of this loss. It led to opportunity and innovation, and ultimately to a very different path, one I would never have considered, a very different path by which to follow what I loved, what I loved to do. I would like to begin sharing this journey by asking you each to picture this scene. A young couple, so desperately wanting to have a family together, have a child, struggling with infertility. Now I want you to imagine that this is you. You have hope. You watch your brother's children play at the family gathering at Christmas. You watch your neighbor's children laugh and giggle at the playground. You see every baby within eyesight. You and your husband have longed to have a child. You've seen countless physicians, countless specialists. And today, you have one more blood test, one more pregnancy test. But today, it's different. It's your third and final attempt at in vitro fertilization. The phone rings. Yes? Yes. Uh oh. No, no, I'm 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 okay. Thank you. Your pregnancy test is once again negative. As a reproductive physiologist, I have been absolutely honored and blessed to have met and worked with thousands of couples as a provider of in vitro fertilization. The words negative pregnancy test are absolutely devastating to the patient, to the couple, to me, to our team. There is no gray in our world. The outcome of an IVF cycle is either positive or negative. When our team would hear the words negative pregnancy test, we would immediately think, what could we have done differently? What could we have done better? What could we have done to have possibly improved their chances for them to conceive and have a child? We always strived to be our very best. Along those lines, some 15 years ago, I was asked to design a new IVF laboratory. And in doing so, I thought long and hard about the very thing, the very being, we were trying to protect, the human embryo. Now, unlike any of us in this room, the human embryo has no mechanisms of defense against its environment, no mechanisms, mechanisms of defense against airborne biologicals, contaminants, pathogens, chemical contaminants, all that we're breathing right now. 
the human embryo is completely at the mercy of its environment. Its environment, that being the IVF laboratory, where we desperately try to mimic the in vivo, sterile, dynamic, growth factor enriched female reproductive tract. And we do so using very sophisticated equipment, high level protocols, sterility, and IVF incubators. Some of which are 90 to 95% room air. So those incubators are pulling in a significant amount of room air to bathe the embryos. So to give you perspective, if I were to take one of those IVF incubators and place it right here on the stage, no one would get pregnant, no one. Because we in this room are breathing thousands of embryotoxic compounds to which we have mechanisms of defense, but not the human embryo. So assuming that air quality had a role in our process or could have an impact on our clinical outcomes, and knowing that it was exceptionally difficult for us to control the amount of pathogens in the air. For example, we can't control that a neighboring business or the hospital is gonna to choose to resurface the medevac pad or resurface the parking lot. We can't control when they may start or finish a construction project or spray insecticide outside. These are all very normal, common, daily occurrences, but each generating thousands of embryotoxic pathogens in the air that eventually may reach our IVF laboratory where we're culturing these embryos up to seven days outside the body, seven days. So assuming that air quality played a role in our clinical outcomes, we didn't know how, but we assumed it was important, and knowing it was difficult to control all the, the contributions to the air, we thought, well, in designing this new IVF laboratory, let's provide the cleanest environment possible. Let's culture our embryos in an ISO 5 or class 100 clean room. In other words, you could bottle a vaccine in this environment. You could design a computer chip in this space. So with the support of an incredibly visionary management team, we did. We designed and built the first in the world from the ground up ISO 5 clean room in which to culture our embryos. We were so proud of this environment. We felt we were offering our patients the very best environment in which to grow their embryos. Another advantage of the clean room is that it must be certified on a regular basis to prove that we are providing the environment that we thought we were, that we said we were. Well, certification requires an enormous amount of data collection. So for the next eight to 10 years, we collected an enormous amount of data to prove the environment. But what we didn't realize at the time, that subset of data was going to provide absolute pearls of wisdom to us 10 years later. It was going to tell us that the human embryo demanded an environment far different from what we were providing. But at the time, this was the best of the best. This was cutting edge. So as you can imagine, this clean room environment was one of a kind. In a way, it was our own child. Again, we were just so proud to offer this environment. Our clinical pregnancy rates exceeded our wildest expectations. We received quite a bit of recognition throughout the world. And then it all came to an end, a very abrupt end. We were purchased by a large corporate group. We were carved out of the hospital. A wise business decision, I'm sure, but for us, the end of an era. We were truly in mourning unbelievable loss. We've all been there, the roller coaster of life. Things are going well, and then the rug just gets pulled out from beneath you. But what I didn't understand at the time was that this devastating loss would open my eyes and provide the opportunity to pursue my passion in working with these amazing couples in a very different way 
the path would involve innovation and the innovation of a technology that would impact patient care in ways we could never have imagined. Still truly grieving and mourning the loss of this amazing space, I went to our national meeting, as I do every year in October, to present the data and findings from the year prior. But this year was with mixed emotions because I knew it would be the last time I would present data from that a uh, spectacular environment. But something happened at this conference. Words were shared to me by my own colleagues that completely changed my thinking and my direction. Knowing that our clean room laboratory uh, was no longer as we had known it, they said, what are you going to do? I, I was honest. I said, I'm not sure. I don't know. All I know is I've been truly blessed to have worked with thousands of couples, amazing couples, and amazing colleagues, each of you. And they said, well, we'll tell you what you're going to do. We'll tell, we'll tell you what you need to do. They said, every year, you come to the conference, and you present problems. You present data, but they're problems. If the presence of this airborne biological, you have this negative consequence on the human embryo or your, or your clinical pregnancy rates. If the presence of this chemical, airborne chemical contaminant, you have this negative consequence on the embryo or on your clinical pregnancy rates. They said you present problems, you help us understand the significance of air quality, but none of us can control it. They said every year, you present problems, but you never present a solution. Well, we didn't have a solution. I wish we had. So they said, you lost the physical space of that amazing clean room environment in which you cultured the embryos. You lost the physical space, but you haven't lost its learnings, all that it taught you. You haven't lost that amazing set of data. Use the data. Look at it from the left, the right, upside down, turn it on its head. Use the data collected in that environment that is teaching us the proper environment in which to culture the human embryo. Use that data and give us a solution. We all have the same issue. Help us improve the level of care we can offer these couples. Give us a solution. And so I did. The words from my own colleagues provided the next fork in the road, the next step. I came home and pulled together the finest and the brightest, chemical engineers, physicists, mechanical engineers, clean room engineers. And after years of engineering and design work, we designed a solution, an air purification system designed specifically to protect the human embryo based upon that amazing subset of data that had been collected in that environment for nearly 10 years. We designed the system, again, specifically to protect the human embryo. The system fits within the ductwork and purifies all of the outside air, the outside air, whether they've sprayed insecticides, started construction sites, or resurfaced the medevac pad, it doesn't matter. The outside air is purified, as is all of the air within the recirculated space. As healthcare workers, you generate an enormous amount of airborne pathogens. It's inevitable. You can't avoid it. The technology, the engineering, and the design made sense to me, but I'm a scientist. I don't believe anything without an overwhelming amount of data, proof of technology, and high levels of statistical significance. So I reached back out to my colleagues, those who had helped to guide me to the next step. And I said, this makes sense, but we need to prove the technology. Quite a few stepped up to their credit. They let go of the edge of the pool, and they installed the air purification system in their space to protect their embryos. Now, four years later, the system is installed 
throughout the United States and the clinical outcomes have been overwhelming. By removing, by finally controlling that variable of error and taking that off the table, their clinical pregnancy rates have been dramatically increased. After years of testing, the system is now patented and it's made right here, right here in the Lehigh Valley. Again, the system was designed to protect the human embryo. And because of that, we chose the highest bar, the most difficult targets to kill or remediate, the most difficult biological pathogens, the most difficult chemical, airborne chemical contaminants to remediate. And because of the bar that was set so high, it kills all the other pathogens that are of greater significance to each of us. The system kills and remediates anthrax, C. diff, MRSA, Pseudomonas, TB, influenza, and again, a litany of airborne pathogens that are of greater significance to us. But because of its effectiveness, the technology has the application outside of IVF and to protect patients along a continuum of care, from protecting the human embryo during the seven-day culture in the in vitro fertilization laboratory to the infant in the NICU, the child in the PICU, the surgical patient in the OR, protecting them from secondary infections or hospital-acquired infections caused by airborne pathogens. And finally, along the continuum of care, to protecting the elderly from airborne illnesses and improving their quality of life. So the system was designed selfishly on my part to protect the human embryo, but I'm equally as passionate about applying it along to other patients along the continuum of care. Extreme challenges can be overwhelmingly difficult, but they can also provide the genesis, the motivation, the opportunity to pursue what you love, to follow your passion via a, a route you would never have anticipated. Loss can define your next positive step. Loss did define my next positive step. I will forever be grateful for the opportunity to mourn, to grow, to innovate. It doesn't matter how you may follow what you love, your passion, how you may pursue it from right to left or left to right. It doesn't matter. As long as it remains the light along your own personal journey, no matter what barriers are thrown your way, Focus on what you love. Do what you love. Now I'd like to end by returning to our couple. A couple so longing for a family, a child. The phone rings again. Hello? Yes? Really? Thank you. Honey, we're pregnant. A new tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>